Some people believe that if Allah bestows them with abundance wealth in this life, it signifies His love and a promise of more in the hereafter. However, Surah Al-Waqi'ah presents a contrasting viewpoint. Uh, how would you explain whether material prosperity or poverty is a sign of Allah's love or displeasure and how people can differentiate and understand Allah's plan in these situations? Uh, this is uh, one of the deceptions that uh, people in this life they have if they don't connect themselves with the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one that created this life and he created it for a purpose. And he explains to the people what's in it and what's to be warned against and what's good and what's bad. So when people turn away from the wahi from Allah and they listen to Iblis the shaytan, he gives them promises and foolish uh, thinkings and things like this. So they become distorted in what this life is all about. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated clearly that in this life, a person's prosperity or lots of wealth and power in this life does not mean anything. Does not mean that that person is good or evil. The worst person, physical conditions in this life, by itself like this, does not mean that that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, is angry with him or pleased with him. Because also some people, they think the other way. That if you're poor and needy and this and that, this is a good sign. No, neither is good or bad. These are all tests and trials of this life. And what is the sign that a person is pleasing to Allah or not is the purpose of this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, the tawheed of Allah and the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do. So if someone is super rich and he is upon the tawheed and he's obedient to Allah and he's fulfilling the rights of Allah with all what that means and wealth and so on and he's not arrogant and all of the different qualities that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, then this is a good sign. And this is a good sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person. And uh, the other side, if someone is afflicted with all kinds of trials and tests and poverty and so on, and he's still holding fast to the deen of Allah, this is a good sign for that person. Which is better? This is a huge, not debate, but it's different from one person to the other. Uh, and every person, you know, uh, the, the richest person can be in a better state than the poorest person and they're both believers based on their iman. So the criteria and the balance of what's good and bad is what's going to be on the weight and the balance of the deeds in the Day of Judgment. No wealth will be put on there. No health, no strength will be put on the balance of the deeds. It's the individuals and their actions. And that's the only thing. As the ayat says, not your wealth nor your offsprings is the things that get you closer to us. Except those who believe and did righteous good deeds, clearly stated in the Quran, no ambiguity in it whatsoever. So uh, that's why this is this is a big deception and shaitan works on people in this. The same thing, if you are weak, oppressed, or you are well established on the face of earth, a person that is an oppressor versus someone that is oppressed. The foolish ones would look at the oppressor as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing him to oppress others. And to kill and to shed blood and he's still eating and drinking and enjoying and parties and so on. Is that a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with him? This is again when a person turns away from the wahi revelation from Allah. As we mentioned before, if someone is like this, if we imagine someone that has all the means in this worldly life and he's doing evil and committing evil and kufr and so on, this is a punishment for him. Because how long he's going to live? 100 years? That means he's increasing the sin on himself. This is the worst condition uh, that a person would have in this life. Because the enjoyment will go away, and then in the punishment in the hereafter, if he does not repent to Allah, he will receive the worst of the punishments. Versus someone that was not in that state. Versus someone else that is the poorest, the most difficult conditions, but he was obedient to Allah. And it doesn't have to be these two extreme ends, but it makes, it makes things clearer. So no one is to understand from this, that we're always encouraged to be weak and poor and oppressed. No one ever would say that. But when both extreme examples are mentioned, then it becomes clear what is the purpose of this life. So definitely, and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we can go on with this. The dunya is of, made of four types of people. We'll talk about this hadith inshallah in more details. But the, the four people are based on two variables, uh, which is what? Al-ilm. Uh, المال. 
الحكمة والمال إذا الرجل أتاه الله الحكمة الرجل أتاه الله المال the wealth and the wisdom which refers to the, to the knowledge the best of all of them is the one that Allah gave him knowledge and gave him wealth because he, then he spent his wealth according to the knowledge and the worst of them and, and then the second one is the one that Allah gave him knowledge but not wealth and he would say if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the wealth of so and so I would act upon it in a good way so they are in the ajr in the reward there are sawa they are the like and then the two bad categories one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him wealth but no knowledge so he is destroying himself with that knowledge because he's acting foolishly and the last one is the one that does not have knowledge and doesn't have wealth and the poor the, the sad reality this miserable person would say if I have the wealth I would do so and so the act of that evil person they are full wizardry they are alike when it comes to the sins that person not even dunya or not, not even hereafter so it's it's about the actions and matters of al-iman and that requires for us to look at even the nusus more nusus more text in the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallam that talks about this subject sorry i'm taking too long here but inshallah maybe we can also explain it in more details